the vibration of vulnerable and like inconquerable are so close to each other. Like if you use the vulnerability as a invitation towards unity, keeping your eye on the ball, then it suddenly very quickly turns into a feeling of inconquerability, like transcendence. But if the, fo if the focus gets sloppy, then our realities are within reach of the zombies, so to speak, to reference your dream. But with that focus, just flying a little bit higher, like nothing can reach there, no attack can reach there. feelings on this topic? about leaving and coming back, I just feel like it's going to be seamless. <laughs> so, so yeah, I feel grateful and it's just solid with people here. Me too. I had this, a similar feeling periodically, and it does have something to do with the dispersion. Mostly energetically, but it's also when more, there's more moving parts and there's more physical partness. Um, where I feel sometimes there's a need to kind of like gather together around the fire kind of vibe, like just get really focused and pure and just unify, like just be in that connection, like of who we are and why we're here. And that's generally enough to bump us into the transcendence or inconquerability. <coughs> if it moves a little bit too much or there's a little bit too much distraction or some leaks and it compounds, then it, it can conjure up this feeling of vulnerability or insecurity, not like personality insecurity, but a lack of security. Vulnerability, better word probably. And then generally I feel the desire to kind of call everyone together, <coughs> kind of drop what you're doing, connect. And that's generally enough. kind of get out of the muddiness or the, mm -hmm. the danger zone, so to speak. And from the context of a team, slash from the context of myself as a leader of sorts, you could also visualize it as, if I imagine kind of looking over my shoulder, 
let's say I'm proceeding, let's say there's a new vision or like just a new face to what we're moving into, or even not necessarily, although it's always, there's always some new face, of course. It doesn't have to be dramatic new face. It doesn't have to be me traveling to the other side of the world or starting a new project or meeting certain people or whatever. But it can be that way. But then in those situations, or at any point, I sort of gauge the whole frequency surrounding the team and the mission, you can kind of picture it like, okay, if, if you were me and you were looking over your shoulder, would you see everyone like pointed in the same direction? Would you see the availability and the unity and the readiness and the alertness and the, yeah, just the readiness basically? Or would you see some people kind of like their nose is in a different direction and if I would toss them a ball, would they, you know, would it hit them or would they know and would they catch the ball? So if you were me and you were looking over your shoulder, or even if you are you and you were looking over your shoulder to the team as a whole, would you feel solid? Like, oh, cool, I can turn back around and focus onwards. And I know I don't have to look over my shoulder because I know all eyes are on the ball, so to speak. So visualization also can conjure up to kind of measure the unity versus the vulnerability of the field. And when we have more different projects going on and we are more dispersed, physically speaking, then it becomes a little, a little more complex. Or when there's new projects and I'm not as available maybe to the group field, for instance, or maybe some others are also occupied with sort of the cutting edge, leading edge elements of the mission? Will everyone else kind of stay intact, like stay cohesive and available and just alert, like proactively aware, focused? Or is there a complacency or automatic tendency that can kind of disperse and cause some leakages. I don't feel that too strongly right now, but I'm just saying as a general metaphor, that works quite well. So when I feel that vulnerability, it kind of feels like I have to look over my shoulder and it doesn't feel as solid. Or it doesn't feel as aware, perhaps, it's a better word. Because in any group setting, team setting, even like the, what our deployment, like our gaming is a good exercise, a metaphor for sometimes. Because in that sense, of course, it's completely imaginary environment. There's nothing really at stake there. But in that illusion, there is a mission and there is something at stake and you're a team and there's an objective and there's different elements and components and enemies. Um, and moving elements to keep track of at any given moment and to reassess, keep track of, reassess, keep track of, reassess, all while kind of staying unified. So if there is a situation where, I'll just use myself right now, but it could be anyone, is more or less aware of the picture of what's happening, like the different elements, and anyone in a leadership position has kind of that dual role sometimes, both of overviewing or maintaining the whole, protecting the whole, while also like leading the edge, like carving new ground, deciding on wh where to go. Again, to use the analogy of um, a tactical situation as we encounter in those video games, But it's, no, it's really no different in what we're doing. It's a mission, you have an objective and there's moving components and there's allies and there's more allies that 
pretend not to be allies sometimes. And so you have a situation with complex elements, moving, moving components. And if you're in a leadership position, which again, I urge you all to feel like you are, because that keeps the alertness alive. If you're in that position, if there's a need, if there's a role, then it's like you have to. You're, you are on pause, whatever is you as a personality is on pause because you're stepping into a position, a role, a responsibility, a duty, right? So in any position of having a duty that involves others, there's often the dual situation where you both have to be aware of the game that is, the group, for instance, the, the team, the cohesion, how your components and your team are doing. But simultaneously, it's your duty or, or your position to be alert to where to go next. And that's kind of that paradoxical role, cause, or it's, it, it could seem like a dichotomy or an opposing task because when you're going in a direction, you're going forwards. So to use the analogy of just having two front-facing eyes like we have, you can only focus in one direction at a time, in a sense. So if you're, if you're aware of the game, the components, and yet you're focusing forwards, you're choosing a direction, then the only way that can really flow in a group setting is if everyone behind you is equally aware or at least aware of their component of the whole so that when the direction is taken, the whole team can move as a unity. Make sense? Yes. Whereas if, like the whole will suffer if the, whoever's in the leadership position, whether that's one or multiple, have to kind of pause their direction to look back and to kind of make sure the, the goslings are under the wing and that there's unity. So again, I'm not feeling that necessarily right now. I don't feel a whole lot of weakness in our field, which is nice. But I did feel that sense of vulnerability and like, oh, I kind of pausing and is everything okay? Like, should I look behind me and check? Is, are all the components flowing? Is everyone in their rightful position and they're aware in their position? They're not kind of dozing off. And um, so I had that feeling similar to that. But it's just good to understand that every part is part of the whole. So in order to execute as a team, there's got to be that alertness, that awareness of the game. And you're all in a leadership position because you're not just consumers anymore. You're actually shepherding this thing for others who will be consuming it for the most part. Like even those loving floaters out there, of which there are quite a few, those wanderers that haven't kind of sharpened their tools yet, haven't stepped into any leadership position, have maybe renounced responsibility or duties, and are more of the nature of living like hippies, even if it's in a positive vibration, they're more in a consumerism position. They're more consuming the transition into fourth density on this planet. Whereas all of you are in a position right now, whether you like it or not, um, or whether you see it that way or not, mm -hmm. at least I see it that way, you're, you are not just consumers of the transformational age. You're not just observers of it. And you're not just letting yourself be led, so to speak. You're, you're actually part of a team and part of a mission that is activated. So you are in a leadership position. Now in this context, it may not always be as obvious because I or someone else will take the lead, but nevertheless, in the bigger picture, you are in a leadership position, each of you, not just in a consumer position.
Would you agree? So if you picture me not being here or other people that often take the lead, if you picture them not being here or they're being kind of miss uh, missing in action or they're like, whatever, on a different sort of side mission, sometimes they can expose to yourself or reveal rather how you are in a leadership position. You just didn't realize it so much. But it is good to realize that because if you're not aware of it, then you're much more likely to kind of doze off on your position on the field. You know, if you're playing baseball and every, everyone has a crucial position on the field or any, any team-based game, really, the ball might land in your court. And like, if you're, not, if you're dozing off because you think the ball is on the other side of the field or or Messi is leading the game so you can kind of chill, then, yeah, sure, he might score a few beautiful points, he might create a lot of opportunity, and it, at those key moments, it might be easy to kind of fall in line and be alert and, like, follow the flow that's set out by a key player. But it's really an illusion, and I think in any sports, even though sometimes a single individual can excel a team, and turn it into something high performing, it's not a single person can win the game if the other team is really alert and like each owns their position completely. Like one person could, in that sense, relatively speaking, never replace like a full group of people that is aware of their position. And oftentimes I find that people are not aware of their position because the pressure is not on them, perhaps, or the brand doesn't carry their name, or they don't get mentioned, or they're not leading a dialogue, or whatever it might be, or they're just new to the group, relatively speaking. But those are all kind of illusions. And if everything around that, that keeps that illusion alive, would fall away, if that comfort, that leadership, that guidance, that MVP would be taken off the field or has an injury or has to play another game, then suddenly becomes clear how you have a position on the field and how every position is a leadership position in and of itself. So don't be distracted by the illusion of having a leader or having leadership or even having the team to fall back on as the leader. Like, oh, the team is the leader can even lead to some um, complacency because if, you, if you're in a group, you, you don't stand out, right? So it's easier to feel, to kind of doze off. Even if you don't have a single leader, if you consider the whole team as kind of the leader, it's still easy within that container to kind of doze off, to not be alert, to not be aware of your role, your duty, and so forth. Does that make sense too? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So... I really urge you guys to see yourself as a leader in your position. You don't even have to define that position. You know, it's not very traditional in our, in our case, so. It doesn't carry a particular title, but just to be aware of the vibration, the vibrational nature of um, being alert in your position. It is a leadership position. And every position can make the difference. And if everyone takes full alert ownership of their position, proactive awareness, then it's impenetrable. It doesn't matter how good an opponent is, it just, if there's unity, it's inconquerable. But if two or three people doze off, then there's vulnerabilities in the field. And now the MVP or the leader or whoever is kind of at the front edge of that hole will have to pause the hole's momentum to some degree to do its duty to make sure that the team is solid and that everyone's like are you aware 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 of yourself are you aware of your needs here are you aware of your role the need for your position so again i have a, this is not a complaint right now because i i've not felt this strong i always feel it to some degree but it's been very minimal so overall i felt really good with this group in the last few weeks which is great 
but it doesn't mean that principle no longer applies, of course. Like, it's an ongoing evolution. And we can always improve our game, and, uh, and it's the nature of how we evolve and accelerate as a group, I think. And again, you're not consumers of this transformational age. You're leaders of it. So yeah, I love that. Holding down the fort, keeping the fire burning, connecting to God, staying close to the Creator, keeping our eye on the ball, everyone focused, in position, are you ready, we're playing a game, are you aware? It doesn't have to be all serious, I'm just being a little serious right now, but you get the gist, no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, because too much playfulness, as you know, can lead to complacency, but it doesn't have to. You can, you can be both, top level playfulness and top level alertness, it doesn't have to be serious that way. But since I got this little heads up warning sensation suddenly, like a couple hours ago, I thought I'd mention this element. Remind us. How does that feel when I say like you're actually not consumers of this global transformation, like you're leaders of it? Does it make sense? It resonates. It's true. Sorry, what? <laughs> It resonates. Resonate? Yeah. Feels true. Feels true? I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> what did you say? True. Yeah. Now, if you have a team of leaders, you can really excel. And the waters that we're getting into, that's what's necessary. That's what's needed. That's, although it was partially, mm -hmm. while she was kind of playing around with her deflection of responsibility um, believe. Nevertheless, she raised a good point of like, just kind of having a sense of what the stakes and the relative bigness of it. At the same time, it's nothing. But <coughs> also, yes, in the game, within the game, it requires um, leadership. It requires ownership. Readiness, accountability, empowered availability. And it's super exciting. If you want to ride that edge and you know that you can, I know you all can, there's no doubt about that. But it's just, will you? Do you want that? And it's, it's difficult to raise that bar if you don't see yourself as, if you don't see that you already are in a leadership position. It's very easy to fall back in a team or in a group But without leadership, would you be running your position still? Can Messi count on the fact that you're over there in the field so when he gets the ball, he can pass it to you without having to think twice? He doesn't have to, in the midst of dealing with this and this guy trying to take the ball from him, he doesn't have to like triple check and like try to guide you to go back to your position and remind you of that. He can actually just take the ball, know exactly where you are, pass the ball and continue so that what he's good at, which is leading a team or at least creating opportunity, is, uh, is uh, optimized, it's not compromised. And that just can't happen if someone on the field, even one person is dozing off because you'd never know where the ball's gonna land. Like it might land in your court tomorrow like completely unexpectedly. You may not be able to preconceive that, but you'll be able to catch that ball if you were ready. So it's about that mode of proactive awareness, proactive alertness. And again, that's hard to conjure up if you're not aware of your position in the field. If you don't have a sense that you're actually needed and you're counted on.
Thank you. Pleasure. Nice. This whole thing is so perfect. Cool. And the message was complete. I said it out loud to people that were here that the message was keep your eye on the ball. Cool. <clears throat> the other thing that did come in as well, and we just part of that vulnerability thing, was remember I said there's a sharp, there's a sharp image as well. Yeah. It's kind of it's like it was a sharp, it's a sharp in the water. Sweet. And baseball is a good image for it because it's that moment when the, I don't know what the positions are called, but it's the pitcher that throws the ball, right? Yeah. So it's that key moment. And it's different in, for, for example, soccer, but if you look at baseball, everyone's at their position. And at that key moment, everyone's aware of the game. Like, because it's all about that moment when the ball gets thrown and it gets hit, everyone needs to have their eye on the ball at the same time. So in baseball, it's somewhat easier to stay alert because everyone always has to be aware of that key moment. So it's a good analogy. It's a good visual for it. Everyone's on their position, on the field, and they all have their eye on the ball, and they know what they're expected to do if the ball gets in their court, so to speak. Sweet. Correct. <laughs> um, so the question here was, would that key moment in our case be every moment? And the answer is yes. Which is the ball, basically. Right, what the moment symbolized by the ball being thrown is the key moment, but in those, again, like, why is everyone on the field aware at that moment? Because there's a need for it, and they're aware of a need. If there's no, like, the moment after, they're less alert. The moment the ball is being pitched, if that's the correct word, I don't know, but then there is a perceived need to be alert, and that's why they're alert. And a moment after, or once the game is over, especially, the alertness drops out. Now, and as human beings, we need a healthy balance between alertness and, and sleepiness or rest, but, but you get the point. To, on the whole, keep our eye on the ball and to be proactively aware. Not for danger or anything like that, or opposition, not to create that, but just to be aware of your position, your leadership, your accountability, and just to see, am I fully, am I fully present? Am I fully available? Am I fully aware? What am I sensing? And if I'm sensing something, am I addressing it? If that's, if that falls in my position, if that's part of my duty. And to be aware of the other players, just of that sense of unity. But it is a more all-time thing. That's why it's kind of a yogic exercise. It's yogic training to be a service to others oriented team player because the yogi strives to permanent awareness, basically, permanent alertness. Not the Western yogi so much, but the original yogi, <laughs> the Adi yogi, strives towards a perfection of attentiveness. And um, being in a team, that has as its mission and sole function the service of the whole, the service of the entire planet and even beyond. Can, if you use it that way, conjure up this undying necessity to be aware of yourself and, and your balance in the game and the players around you and your duty in that holistic hologram. So it's kind of like creating an external function or permission slip or need or symbol. In this case, a team-based 
mission of unity towards service to others, it produces a perceived need, if you use it that way, towards constant awareness of self, of what's beyond the self, of other self, where you're at on the field, so to speak, what's needed, how's your balance, So it's not without its intensity, as you all know already. But that's also the game you like to play, no? Mm, yeah. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. <coughs> Overall, it seems to be what you guys uh, subscribe to. So then I count on that, or I expect that. Great. Thanks for your attentiveness. <laughs>